provided huge benefits for national economy. Besides weather forecasts, the study of Earth from space uncovered fantastic secrets of natural deposit, fish migrations, it enabled mapping of forests to be made, managing water resources, saving in hydraulic energy, transportation expenses, and scores of other fields. The expenditures on space exploration started to be recovered for the first time. Spending one ruble for space made a profit of 20 to 30 rubles on Earth. As chief designer, Yosifan acquired a worldwide popularity, though the name that he showed in print was Professor Andronov. Those were the rules of the game. As to the weather Sputnik, he got Lenin Prize for that. Then it came out on top. And under Yosifan, the institute turned out to be a leader in weather satellites, atmospheric observations, and many other objectives. A brilliant trailer to the space exploration programs was the joint Soviet-Bulgarian Sputnik. Yosifan was the top official on that project, he understood at once that it was the best occasion for exploring and tuning up all the available equipment for the earthquake prediction techniques. It looked as if it was another project where one can spend a lot of money and get nothing in return. The problem of earthquake prognostication does not contain any comprehensive solution. We were surprised then that Yosifan was trying to sort out each instrument, the capabilities of those instruments and their sensitivity, so that they could respond to the minutest variation of electrical field, magnetic components that might indicate seismic activity. The idea of a big system suggesting seismic events was concealing another idea. Nobody knew about it that time. It appeared that earthquakes can be predicted by the condition of the ionic layer of the atmosphere, the ionized atmospheric plasma. Unfortunately, we could not record the precursors of the earthquake. Yosifan was very upset when the Spitak disaster happened that he had failed to resolve that situation. I can only say that now, 25 years after the event, we are constructing a space-based system for predicting large-scale seismic events and most of the instruments now are what Yosefan had been talking about over 25 years ago. That man, as if he was all made of the feeling of concern about the future, a wise man, according to him, was one who, while building a house on the shore, would think that someday it could be flooded. When he came to the village in 1983, he warned, keep wheat in the house, you will always need wheat. The Turks may come and surround. He talked on those things sometimes. 
he advised the villagers to keep old carts in order, just in case. Then I thought, himself, going to outer space, but for us it is the carts. Later, with the events in Karabakh, I got what he meant. Yosifian very closely felt what was going on in Armenia and Karabakh. Once he said, if I were 70 now, he thought that 70 is not a very old age and he could have become the president of Karabakh. Andranik Yosifian has established a singular scientific center, the All Union Research Institute of Electrical Mechanics, which was also a production facility Yosifian had led that institute for 30 years, being guided by one important principle. Any idea is valuable if and only if it is being realized in metal. The institute had scores of affiliated branches in different cities of the Soviet Union. It was from this central office that he controlled the electrical empire of his creation. Everything here has been retained as it was in his time. The institute as a whole is a very singular phenomenon. It is multi-profile and the multiple approaches that have been realized under Yosifan makes it a unique institution. And the boss himself, we nicknamed him Andron. He enjoyed tremendous respect and love. Of course, he was a unique person, so the quality of the institute is determined first and foremost by the leader. In 1974, Andranik Yosifan was compelled to leave the post of chief executive officer. He tried to separate the functions of a scientist and administrator to dedicate more time to science. He said the position that never inspired him too much but he remained the principal investigator. To a certain degree, Yosifian's person and his activity countered the established systems of governance in our former state. It was never on good terms with the totalitarian authority. He was always at odds with them. It was a customary situation. On the other hand, he was, um, of course, man of his time, having been against the system. When the system collapsed, he became apologetic to it. He understood pretty well the defects of that social order and those public relations. To my mind, he may have some ideas of getting out of the emerging situation. However, his general outlook was pro-socialist. It was his origin. He never renounced it. In fact, he remained the same as he has always been. I will tell you what. I have heard many speakers in my lifetime. No one could speak like him. When talking on a simple subject, he perceived a very large event in the background. Yosifian has authored 34 inventions incorporated into real-life structures. Many wondered how it happened that an engineer and an inventor aimed at a practical result was carried away by the problems of theoretical physics. In the 50s, Yosifan took up the theory of electromagnetic field by publishing scores of scientific works. His articles and proposals were not accepted at some physical companies, but it did not embarrass him. He continued working on the theory. When he was already sick, he invited me to his place, and it was clear to me that what he was developing contained a great future. 
In fact, that is quite enigmatic to me, what Andronik Yosifian disliked in electromagnetism. He was not at peace with it, and with all the basement wherein all his life was going on, leaning upon the scientific legacy and the ideas of Maxwell, Faraday, Dirac, Planck, Yassifian suggested his own new system of differential equations of electrodynamics, which actually supplemented the basic Maxwell equations. The physicists severely criticized it, qualifying it as an impertinence. However, he had followers in Armenia as well, at this Institute of Electronics and Physical Research, it was Roland Tarkhanian. At the Polytechnic, it was academician Arishian. He had also had followers in Belarus. He was also in correspondence with some of his following abroad. He believed this theory was life to him. He used to say there were those fluxoids. They had to be discovered very soon, and you will see that it was right. I'm not against Maxwell theories, but I only say that the Osifian theory also has the right to exist. Andronik Yosifan had told me a lot of things about many miracles encountered by the designers of electromagnetic devices. I was stunned by the fact that they in actual fact make no use of Maxwell equations as clean as they are used by theoretical physicists. They have a special system including electrical charges and magnetic charges and electric currents and magnetic currents and this system enables them to do correct and precise calculations of complex systems. The theorists rejected Josephine's theory even at the time when in 1974 an American physicist Young obtained the same equations 15 years after Josephian. Even those petty tricks of fortune that deprived him of the title of academician, of course, they could not be referred to Yosifan's outlooks, but rather to the intrigues going on at the academy. Well, Yosifan had also taken up theoretical electronics, so that was their punishment to him. No doubt he had made a scientific contribution into space exploration and missile technology, and we, of course, know who they had elected to the academy. He was the first, not among equals, but absolutely the first. The earthly life of Andronik Yosifan terminated on April 1993, and 40 days later, when a Christian soul is elevated to heaven, there was a symbolic event in space. The lunar shade covered the Yosifan launched Sputnik, and its solar cells went out, as if making a sign that Yosifan's soul rushed to eternity. In actual fact, that may not be quite true. There were quite a lot of mythology around Andronik Yosifan during his lifetime. Later, the number of myths has greatly increased. There is always a halo of mythology around a giant like that man. I think it can hardly be an accident. The missions of great men are always enigmatic. The greater the scale, the greater the indeterminacy.
I really came to see his greatness at his funeral when mother and I were sitting and there was a procession of people with flowers. What struck me was the sincerity and love shown by those people. He had done something personal for each of those people. That was the most essential. That was where most of his greatness was. No doubt he was unlike any ordinary man. Это, конечно, очень удивительно и показывает, что он был необыкновенный человек.